Hello, my name is Jurgen, and welcome back to World of Warships. I haven't had a proper video of World of Warships in terms of gameplay in a while. I did a video on the Konigsberg in terms of a very, very quick preview before they actually are released into the game. But now, at the time of making this video, which is the 22nd of October, the vehicles, sorry, the ships, uh, the German cruisers and the Soviet destroyers are now in the game since the 19th but I thought I would hop into my turpits and try and get a good game and finally I actually had a pretty decent match which is pretty surprising because every game I've played in the turpits thus far I've either been in tier 10 games where I just get battered by midways and the other tier 10 aircraft carrier which is the Japanese one the Harakaku Harakairu something like that. Um, as you can tell I'm not very good at pronouncing anything. <laughs> so um, this matchmaking is a bit more lenient in terms of it's not tier 10, it is a tier 8 game. There are two tier 8 battleships, me and another Topet, versus two North Carolinas which are in a division or a platoon if you play World of Tanks. There are two Rangers on each team as well. So first opening salvo is that uh, one of those North Carolinas and they will miss typically. It seems I forgot to mention that the enemy also has a tier 8 turpits as well. So in terms of battleships they have the advantage in terms of tier because we have two tier 6's and two tier 8's. They have three tier 8's and one tier 6. They also have the same layout in terms of cruisers. We have one tier 8 and two tier 7s, so do they. Uh, three tier 7s even, so we do have a slight advantage. I should probably read more fully. Um, but yes, we have a opening salvo at the North Carolina, which was ineffective, and then we fire at that other target, which I think is a Miyoko. So, we're getting ready to re- load the main armament and he's turning into the gun so hopefully these will cause some significant damage however my poor aim leads to us only doing around three to four thousand damage however we did turn preemptively for those torpedoes something you're gonna have to look out for if you're newer to the game any Japanese cruiser will have torpedoes and often when they're turning away from you they're actually launching their torpedo spreads. So be warned, otherwise you may come into contact with those torpedoes. However, he is just run out of luck and boom there he goes, friendly torpedo strike straight into him from this Otago in front of us I think. Yep, that Otago. So we've done very meager damage at the moment, 9 hits. We've also assisted in capturing the base as well as doing a little bit of critical damage on that Miyoko. But yeah, the Turpets of course, it's a very famous ship and obviously famous in the game as well for being the first German ship in the game and the first battleship as well. The Turpets is also notable for having torpedo armament, something which is or has not been seen on battleships thus far. It also has very, very good armour. But the guns can sometimes be underwhelming. We managed to do 3000 odd damage on that turpit over there. Looking for some more. He is at a perfect angle for us to penetrate, but again, my shells are a little too fast. My aim is a little shaky. I haven't really played that many battleship games uh, in a while. And again, another perfect angle of attack on this North Carolina. He's focusing on someone else and he is perfectly straight on towards our lines. Towards our line, towards our guns. So we do fire a full salvo, but again, it looks a little, little dodgy. Do a little bit of critical damage and two target hits for um, either an overpen or just a just some spooling damage, some very minor surface damage as it were. But thankfully the Turpet has 
quite a nice reload because its main armaments are smaller than that of comparable uh, comparable tier battleships. And did you see that destroyer? Because I have, and we don't want to get sunk by him in this early stage of the game. You can see the torpedoes have quite a nice arc for the battleship. Uh, the battleship, of course, is very big, but having the torpedoes in the middle on each side allows you to launch them quite nice. So hopefully he's launched his torpedoes as you can see. Our torpedoes are away. They do look, look a little bit slow, but... <laughs> no problem at all. For some reason those shells were pretty perfect in terms of their accuracy. And two of our torpedoes just hit his, uh, his wreck, which is going down to the bottom of the ocean. So that's our first kill on a priority target for battleships. Destroyers will ruin your day very quickly. I was considering firing against that guy but he is a bit savvy and he is heading to away from us. And this is something you don't want to encounter in any battleship and that is an Atlanta class. Atlanta class. Because even though its armament is very small it has such a high rate of fire. Look at the fire coming in from the left there. And I now... Yep, he's now spread his attention to me. Enemy of torpedoes. We're getting attacked from the left side as well. I'm thinking about launching torps, but they're not ready and he's out of range anyway. So we either need to kill this guy or we need to get out of here because as you know, battleships cannot take HE fire for that long. Maybe that will do some damage. Four target hits, 4,500. Again, I was firing HE rather than armor piercing. And even though the Atlanta has such a fearsome fire rate, its armor isn't brilliant. And therefore, we probably would have penetrated and perhaps got a citadel or two. And perhaps killed him outright. Because we did hit a lot of those shells. Uh, four out of eight, which is pretty good accuracy for any battleship, really. And now we're fighting a German cruiser, which is not a German cruiser at all. It just looked German for some reason. It's the New Orleans. Ah, uh, the uh, camo confused me slightly. The American camo and the German camo look a bit weird. Or they look a bit similar. Or it might just be my beady eyes <laughs> failing to see. Ah, we finally got a citadel penetration on a battleship. That's something that never happens to me. So at this point in the game, I was thinking, wow, this is actually going a lot better than my usual experiences with the turpets. However, as you can see, we're on to 22... 22? 20, uh, 22,000, there we go. <laughs> English. I, uh, I'm a pro, don't worry. <laughs> 22,000 hit points. So we're waiting for our repairs and we need to get out of here because, you know, we don't want to take unnecessary damage and we want to remain in this game as long as possible. 3,000 damage, 1,100 damage. I'll take it, but I would have wanted more. Those look good. Another 3,000 damage though. Not as good as I had hoped. Enemy torpedoes are coming in, but they aren't in our path. So I think we are alright. Now, we haven't really been plagued by enemy aircraft for this game, and our ranger on our team has been doing a good job in keeping the aircraft at bay. However, some bombers are now coming in, but we are shooting them up. And we have launched our BF 109 because I've swapped out the extended range. Um, the spying aircraft for a friendly fighter. We do manage to hit that guy for a couple of our shells, but again, North Carolinas have bigger guns than us, and even though our armor's pretty good, it isn't good at a flat angle like we were. So, we need to angle up, and we need to try again. I consider firing at the Carolina, but he is too well angled, and here comes some. Ooh. Enemy bombers, but 
we managed to citadel the New Orleans when he was stealth. So those shells went true. And we pick up our seventh kill with a pretty good shot. Still under attack by bombers. We are on fire, but we don't want to repair the fires just yet because these bombers are going to attack us. There we go, they miss. And I'm not sure if I repair the flames. Repair the flames. Extinguish the flames. Or just let them continue. Expecting a torpedo strike, perhaps. Now, hopefully, that's going to do some decent damage. We do need to get rid of that guy. He has been plaguing me for a long time. However, he's not stupid and he does out-turn my attack by simply turning to the left. Changing his course, changing his speed perhaps, and the fire eventually goes out. So, we're on 13,000 damage. And in hindsight, I probably should have used the repair ability to keep some more health. But you never know when aircraft come and ruin your day. And the Turpus is not a very good ship in terms of its maneuverability. So you're going to have to be careful. You can see it's very slow to turn. Only 3,000 damage. We need another citadel. Ooh, there's the enemy aircraft carrier. However, because I decided to use the fighter instead of the spotter aircraft, I cannot fire at him. So you pick... <sighs> fail, 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 fail. You pick and deal with it, basically. And that's something I was waiting for, a double fire from those bombers. Good job I hadn't got them, uh, got the cooldown on the damage control. Otherwise I would have burned to death by now. And also we use our last repair, because we need as many hit points for the final minutes of this game. I say final minutes because there's only three ships on our team, including myself and another battleship, which will be Andrew and his Turpus. We also have Ranger support, and he's been doing a good job with his aircraft. But we have to fight two enemy battleships, a cruiser, and their Ranger as well. And that cruiser is the Atlanta from earlier. So, where is he? We haven't seen him in a while. We've been detected by aircraft, so that means everyone knows where we are. Friendly fighters are on the tail of one of those squadrons, so that he is trying to help us out. And our fighter isn't ready to deploy just yet. But as you can see, our friendly fighters have knocked out four of their bombers in that squadron. We are firing at the enemy ranger now, but our shots are too far. They go too far, and we miss. Hopefully these dive bombers won't do too much. We do shoot one of them down, but... We're lucky in the fact that they miss. So, there's that Atlanta. And we really, really need to get rid of this guy immediately. So I decide to stagger my fire, because I expect he will turn. Still managed to get 1100 damage though. And here comes the pain. We really need to get rid of this guy. We can't run him. We can't run him? We can't outrun him. And we can't ram him either. He's far too far away. He, sent us, he sets us on fire. My repair ability is ready. My damage control ability. We're firing. Oh! <laughs> oh. That was not an angle I expected for a citadel penetration. Straight through the front. Well, probably the upper deck armor towards the front end of the ship. And we do get set on fire by dive bombers, but we do manage to extinguish the, f um, the fire. However, there is an enemy right on my right-hand side. It's one of those North Carolinas, and I'm now on 2,700 health. And have you been in this situation before where you've tried, you've tried and tried and tried, and then you've noticed the threat too late, and the torpedoes take you out? There I go down in a very blazing, blazing ball of fire. It's pretty heart-wrenching to see that. 
However, we are winning on points, but the flags are under control of the enemy. Well, A and C are uh, in, at this present point in time. Let's see. Well, I would let you see what the team manages to do, but it does go on for quite a lot longer than I expected. So, I'll just take you through the post result screen of this battle. So, as you can see, that was a pretty nice credit haul there. Of course, this is a tier 8 premium, so if you have a good game, you're going to get half a million credits or more. But, I think this was either a times 2 or possibly... No, no, it was a times 2, definitely. Uh, 6,696 experience earned, which is very nice when grinding through the new vehicle, uh, the new ships, the new destroyers for the Soviets and the new German cruisers. Both of which I have not been having a great time with at lower tiers. Especially, it's so cripplingly to play. It, it cripples you so much playing the lower tier torps um, on the destroyers uh, for the Soviets because literally the torps have... Uh, you might as well throw them, they're, they're that bad. <laughs> um, but maybe I just needed to come up with new tactics. Um, however, the guns are good in terms of the range, but the turret rotation is pretty bad at lower tiers, so I'm looking forward to the later tier destroyers because the Kaborosk, Kaborosk, there we go, looks a lot better. Anyway, I'm digressing from the post-game results. Uh, as you can see, top on the team in terms of kills, we shot down 15 aircraft, which is pretty good, and 2,332. Uh, 2,232 damage, damage experience earned. I am recording this uh, late. Um, so, for the bearers, as you can tell. Um, the two opposing North Carolinas were certainly uh, worthy adversaries, but the Ranger and the Turpets, which were left on our team, did a good job at securing that game. Detail report, we hit... 37 of our EP shells and conducted 81,000 damage. We did some HE damage as well. And we also hit 5 of our 60 secondary batteries for an extra 2k damage. So, there you go. With the Turpets, finally a decent game for me. But unfortunately, those pesky torpedo bombers finished me off. So, I hope you enjoyed the video on the Turpets. I actually enjoyed playing it for once. Uh, very nice credit haul. Um, which surprised me. So, if you did enjoy it, please be sure to give a like down below and possibly share the video with your friends or perhaps with the wider world by hitting the share button at the bottom left. And of course, leave a comment and perhaps if you're new, think about subscribing. That would really make my day and I'll be making more of this and other games, predominantly World of Tanks and Armored Warfare, in the future. As always, I've been Jujin, this has been World of Warships, and I'll see you, chaps and chapettes, in the next one.